a friend of mine who's learning about Judaism recently asked me about, uh, she watched some videos about um, heaven and hell or Gan Eden, the Olam Haba and uh, Gehinom and um, she had questions because she thought that only Christianity believes such things about the concepts of, of heaven and hell. So, so we don't call them heaven and hell in Judaism, that's kind of just an English term. But um, she's asking, you know, also about demons and about the Satan and and, and uh, concepts, aspects like this that she she thought were only only existed in in like kind of a Christian thought. And so I thought this would be a good video to make for people who are who are kind of just learning about the basics of Judaism. Um, and definitely there is, there is, uh, Gehinom is a place which is not, not a nice place, it's described as a fiery place where people's souls go after they die, um, to either cl to cleanse their sins or depending on the sins, some people who don't, uh, who don't repent of their sins, uh, sometimes depending on what they did, they, they might spend even eternity there, uh, or they might spend a long time there. And it's a very painful, horrible place, more painful and horrible than you could imagine. Uh, in this world. There's a story of a guy um, uh, in the time of Rabbi Nachman who, who suffered. He had like a pain in his bones, I think, if I recall the story right. He had a pain in his bones that was really bad. And uh, he suffered for months and months for, for a long, long time. And Rabbi Nachman told him, this is better than suffering a, a minute in, in, uh, in Gehinom. There is certainly, definitely a concept of an afterlife that is good, uh, Gan Eden, which is uh, the paradise of, of the world to come. Um, but basically, it definitely does exist in Judaism. And in fact, the concepts that, that, are, that people teach in Christianity and Islam are, are just taken from, from the concepts that we have in Judaism. Uh, they're taken from our concepts, but they're not always accurate. Uh, for example, there's the idea of the Satan. The Satan is, is a force, not necessarily like a, a red guy with horns, you know, that, that kind of image that, that's been per portrayed. Um, but such a thing definitely does exist. And, but the difference between the, the concepts of demons and the Satan and, and, and things like that is that they're all actually agents of Hashem. They never run contrary to the will of Hashem or what Hashem allows. That's why a person doesn't need to fear anything besides Hashem Himself. Because Hashem will, uh, makes it so that even also Malachim, angels uh, and Shadim and demons, the, these these spiritual beings uh, are under Hashem's rule and control always. People need to be very careful about this whole kind of rational Judaism. These people out there who are pushing a, a so-called rational Judaism. And these people are people who don't necessarily believe in demons, they don't necessarily believe in, in any sort of Torah spirituality which we have, which does exist and is very real. This kind of thing is not, is not native to authentic Judaism whatsoever. And they, and they pride themselves in saying that they're, they're the authentic Judaism and that they, they, they don't subscribe to things that they call further or, or later developments in, in uh, the Torah world, like Kabbalah, like... like um, the Zohar, um, and it's interesting because a lot of these people, they say that Rambam, uh, Maimonides, that he he was also one of these kind of rationalist Judaists, and that's actually not true. The Rambam absolutely did believe in in demons, and and that can be proven. These people say that he didn't believe in demons, that he was kind of like this rational type, but it's not actually it's actually not true. And I heard, and I and I don't know where this is, but there's in Mishneh Torah. There's a section that is actually a Hebrew version exactly of the Aramaic of the Zohar, of a section in the Zohar. So basically there's, an, there, there's a part of the Mishneh Torah that is word for word what is written in a section in the Zohar, except the Zohar was written in Aramaic and uh, the Rambam pre pre writes it in uh, Hebrew. That's very interesting, and I, I have yet to find out exactly where that is, but I heard from an extremely reliable source, I don't doubt it for a minute, that that's, that that's true. Um, and it's, it's, it's very, you know, people, you can see the evidence of, of evil spirits, demons, and, and Malachim spoken of in the Tanakh. It's a very real thing, 
It's a very, it, it's something that's spoken in the Tanakh, and simply the details of all the spirituality are contained within the Oral Torah. Now, somebody who doesn't believe these things, he, he can be described as a, as a kofer, as a, as a denier of uh, a whole aspect of the Torah, which is actually, can be punishable by, by losing your place in the world to come, and that's a, that's a very scary thing. The main thing is that a person needs to, to, to not be dismayed by the fact that there is an afterlife and that a person may be punished in an afterlife. This world itself is, is a form of punif- punishment. Reincarnations are are a hundred percent true. Re- reincarnation happens. Um, most of us in this world are reincarnations of of previous souls we've existed before. We've been here before. It's not really anything new. And so the, these are concepts. Reincarnation itself is actually a form of punishment. To be reincarnated into this world, a person could totally miss it. Let's say they were mostly observant in the, one of their past lives. And then they're reincarnated to correct some mistakes. But in their, incarn- re- their new incarnation, they, they, might go, they might go astray completely. And, and then their, their souls will definitely be in a much worse position. So, reincarnation is a form of punishment. Uh, there's punishment after a person dies. And, and there's paradise after a person dies. The main thing is a person cannot de- be dismayed by this. He cannot be dismayed by these facts, and he has to learn what Hashem requires of him, depending on whether he's a Jew or whether he's not, because Hashem has, has his will for, for all, all of mankind. And a person needs to learn Hashem's will for him, and he needs to do it. And whenever he, he needs to know Hashem's will, because when, then he will know when he transgressed, and he can, he can do teshuva, or repentance for for what he did wrong. That's a very simple thing that everybody should be aiming towards, but there's so many obstacles in this world. Uh, there's so many obstacles and so many pitfalls, so many ways a person could fall off completely living in this world and missing the mark that it's, it's, it is very difficult, but at the same time it's very simple to know Hashem, to draw closer to Hashem. All the tools are there for you. You have everything accessible to you, especially in this day and age where, where all sorts of information is accessible to people online. And people can figure out what Hashem's Torah says. They can read the, the commentaries that shed light on, on all the different aspects of Torah and learn halachot to know the, the fine details of everyday life in all sorts of different circumstances, in all the different aspects of Torah, what a person should do, what he shouldn't do, and so on and so forth. And it's all there for somebody to learn and to understand. A person should make a great effort to, to, to learn all of Hashem's will. This, is, this itself, you know, is a very simple thing. If a person thinks and focuses his mind on that, then he's not going to fall. It'll, it'll, be very, it'll be easy for him. Not that it's easy to do all these things. A person has to change his character. He has to change if he has an anger problem, if he has, a, if he has uh, you know, any sort of problem, any, anything in his nature that naturally causes him to, to do a certain sin or, or, or a certain bad uh, character trait. A person needs to change those and it can be a very difficult thing. Especially in this generation, a lot of people are very lazy. A lot of people like the drive through go, go get McDonald's. You know, it's instant food, but it's crap. So a person really needs to to work hard, and that's something that, you know, working hard in spirituality is something that is very difficult for this generation in general. So basically that's it. If a person focuses on that, it never gets, never gets, uh, you know, his joy doesn't get diminished by the fact that, that such a serious punishment potentially waits a lot of people uh, after they die. A person needs to be happy and seek Hashem to do Hashem's will simply, in simplicity, simply to serve Hashem and have a simple Emunah, simple faith and trust in Hashem that He is the creator of the universe, that He actually loves you more than you could, could even imagine. When a person falls, they can't, they can't stay down. They have to get right back up immediately. And that's a very important thing because a lot of people, after they sin or they do something wrong or they're dismayed by something that, that they, they think all these years I've been doing something wrong, a person needs to start new every single day like it's the first day that they've ever served Hashem. They're going to wake up today and, and, and make that their, their main focus from the get-go as soon as they wake up in the morning. That's the important thing that a person always has to have in their mind. And it is good to have in mind the, the fear of punishment, of what you could do in everyday actions. It's a very serious thing. 
you should really see some videos of some people um, who have who have left this world uh, and were temporarily dead. There's a story of an of an Israeli secular man who was clinically dead, and he went into the next world. And what he what he describes is very scary. And as he's telling you the story, he's crying, and he's and the seriousness of it, the seriousness of it is is very intense. And interestingly, everything that this guy didn't know Torah at this point in time when he was a secular Jew. And interestingly, everything that he says that happened to him. In the afterlife, after he died, after he was clinically dead, and he and he saw all these things, all these this whole series of events happened to him. It's exactly what we have in the oral Torah about what happens to a person after they die. It's it's exactly what goes on, what what it said previously. So we know we know what happens. There's no doubt to it. And a person should really see this video about what this guy went through. And, and and it's a very good thing to be to have a spark of fear in you from that, to know that that it's a very serious thing to do Hashem's will and you can't be lax about it.